Simplicity, patience, compassion. These three are your greatest treasures. Simple in actions and thoughts, you return to the source of being. Patient with both friends and enemies, you accord with the way things are. Compassionate towards yourself, you reconcile all beings in the world. Taoism is the art of being in the world, for it deals with the present, ourselves. It is in us that God meets with nature, and yesterday parts from tomorrow. The present is the moving infinity, the legitimate sphere of the relative. Relativity seeks adjustment. Adjustment is art. The art of life lies in a constant readjustment to our surroundings. Be content with what you have. Rejoice in the way things are. When you realize there is nothing lacking, the whole world belongs to you. Let your eyes see what they see, not what others want you to see. Let your ears hear what they naturally hear, not what others want you to hear. Let your mouth speak your mind freely, and not be constrained by other people's approval or disapproval. Let your mind think what it wants to think, and not let other people's demands dictate your thoughts. If your senses and your mind are not allowed to do what they want to do naturally, you are denying them their rights. When you cannot think, sense, feel, or act freely, then your body and mind are injured. Break these oppressions, and you will cultivate life. Be careful what you water your dreams with. Water them with worry and fear, and you will produce weeds that choke the life from your dreams. Water them with optimism and solutions, and you will cultivate success. Always be on the lookout for ways to turn a problem into an opportunity for success. Always be on the lookout for ways to nurture your dream. Strength should always be complemented by softness. If you resist too much, you will break. Thus, the strong person knows when to use strength and when to yield. And good fortune and disaster depend on whether you know how and when to yield. Those who do not know how to suffer are the worst off. There are times when the only thing we can do is to bear our troubles until a better day. To solve a problem, you need to remove the cause, not the symptom. To know and to think we know not is the crown. To not know and to think we know is the affliction. Knowing others is intelligence. Knowing yourself is true wisdom. Mastering others is strength. Mastering yourself is true power. If a branch is too rigid, it will break. Resist and you will perish. Know how to yield and you will survive. Only he who has no use for the empire is fit to be entrusted with it. At the center of your being, you have the answer. You know who you are, and you know what you want. Life is a series of natural and spontaneous changes. Don't resist them. That only creates sorrow. Let reality be reality. Let things flow naturally forward into whatever way they like.
Kindness in words creates confidence. Kindness in thinking creates profoundness. Kindness in giving creates love. A person with a mind is bound to be filled with conceptions. These conceptions prevent him from knowing things directly. So a person with a mind shall never really know. Trying to explain Zen is like trying to catch wind in a box. The moment you close the lid, it ceases to be wind and in time becomes stagnant air. A good traveller has no fixed plans and is not intent on arriving. When you are content to simply be yourself and don't compare or compete, everyone will respect you. The fact is that those who do not see themselves but who see others who fail to get a grasp of themselves but who grasp others, take possessions of what others have but fail to possess themselves. They are attracted to what others enjoy but fail to find enjoyment in themselves. If you play a game where scrap pieces of glass are at stake, you will play skillfully. If your expensive belt buckle is at stake, you'll start to get clumsy. If it's your money that's at stake, you'll fumble. It's not that you've lost your skill. It's because you're so flustered by things happening outside that you've lost your calmness inside. Lose your stillness and you will fail in everything you do. A man with outward courage dares to die. A man with inner courage dares to live. A man like this will not go where he has no will to go, will not do what he has no mind to do. Though the world might praise him and say he had really found something, he would look unconcerned and never turn his head. Though the world might condemn him and say he has lost something, he would look serene and pay no heed. The praise and blame of the world are no loss or gain to him. Things joined by profit when pressed by misfortune and danger will cast each other aside. Let your mind wander in simplicity. Blend your spirit with the vastness. Follow along with things the way they are and make no room for personal views. Then the world will be governed. A beam or pillar can be used to batter down a city wall, but it is no good for stopping up a little hole. This refers to a difference in function. Thoroughbreds like Kiji or Hua Li could gallop a thousand li in one day, but when it came to catching rats, they were no match for the wildcat or the weasel. This refers to a difference in skill. The horned owl catches fleas at night and can spot the tip of a hair. But when daylight comes, no matter how wide it opens its eyes, it cannot see a mound or a hill. This refers to a difference in nature. Now do you say that you are going to make right your master and do away with wrong, or make order your master and do away with disorder? If you do, then you have not understood the principle of heaven and earth, or the nature of the ten thousand things. This is like saying that you are going to make heaven your master and do away with earth, or make yin your master and do away with yang. Obviously, it is impossible. We may be floating on Tao, 
But there is nothing wrong with steering. If Tau is like a river, it is certainly good to know where the rocks are. Great power is worry, and total power is boredom, such that even God renounces it, and pretends instead that he is people, and fish and insects and plants. The myth of the king who goes wandering among his subjects in disguise, Travel is such a wonderful experience, especially when you forget you are traveling, then you will enjoy whatever you see and do. Those who look into themselves when they travel will not think about what they see. In fact, there is no distinction between the viewer and the scene. You experience everything with the totality of yourself, so that every blade of grass, every mountain, every lake is alive and is a part of you. When there is no division between you and what is other, this is the ultimate experience of traveling. To attain knowledge, add things every day. To attain wisdom, remove things every day. Those who know don't talk. Those who talk don't know. Close your mouth, block off your senses, blunt your sharpness, untie your knots, soften your glare, settle your dust. This is the primal identity. Be like the Tao. It can't be approached or withdrawn from, benefited or harmed, honored or brought into disgrace. It gives itself up continually. That is why it endures. You have only to rest in inaction, and things will transform themselves. Smash your form and body, spit out your hearing and eyesight. Forget you are a thing among other things, and you might join in great unity with the deep and boundless. The Tao is clear, yet this clarity requires you to sweep away all your clutter. At all times watch out for your own stupidity, be careful of how your mind jumps around. When nothing occurs to involve your mind, you return to true awareness. When unified mindfulness is purely real, you comprehend the great restoration. The ridiculous ones are those who try to cultivate quietude. As long as body and mind are unstable, it is madness to go into the mountains. When two things occur successively, we call them cause and effect if we believe one event made the other one happen. If we think one event is the response to the other, we call it a reaction. If we feel that the two incidents are not related, we call it a mere coincidence. If we think someone deserved what happened, we call it a retribution or reward depending on whether the event was negative or positive for the recipient. If we cannot find a reason for the two events occurring simultaneously or in close proximity, we call it an accident. Therefore, how we explain coincidences depends on how we see the world. Is everything connected so that events create resonances like ripples across a net? Or do things merely co-occur and we give meaning to these co-occurrences based on our belief system? Lei Tzu's answer, it's all in how you think.